can turn the world on with her smile Who can take a nothing day And suddenly make it all seem worthwhile Well, it's you, girl, and you should know it With each glance and every little movement you show it Love is all around, no need to waste it You can never tell why don't you take it You're gonna make it after all You're gonna make it after all does it make? They're both the same. Uh, what's your headline say? Uh, something about transit strike averted. Mine says, Mary Richards is a terrific date. Hey! Oh, you know who had this made up? Wes Callison. Probably had it done at one of those novelty stores, and then he dropped it off so I'd find it this morning. Wes, is that the guy you were out with last night? Yeah, gee, this is just like him. He is such a fun guy. I met a fun guy like that at a party. Oh, he was wearing Bermuda shorts, a propeller beanie, and a T-shirt <laughs> that said Olympic sex team. Oh. Do you know what really bothered me, Mayor? It was a come-as-you-are party. Oh. No, no, Wes isn't like that. He's really great. He's sweet and got a great sense of humor. He's the kind of guy you should meet. No good, Mayor. I always get a guy with a great sense of humor. What I'm looking for is a guy with a great sense of serious. Uh -huh. So what's he do? Oh, uh, he's a writer at the station. Mm. News writer, huh? No. No, he's a comedy writer. What show? Chuckles. Uh, <laughs> Chuckles, the, you know, clown. But it's only, it's only temporary. He really wants to be a comedian. Wait a minute, Mary. Are you telling me a grown man actually sits in front of a typewriter and writes, Chuckles hits Mr. Pussycat over the head with a rubber chicken? I really don't know. Uh, Rhoda, if you'll excuse me, I am kind of late for work. Mary, I would bet anything he wrote the Chuckles anthem. How does that go again? Come on, girls. Come on, boys. You can make a lot of noise. Run around, cavort, cut up. There are no grown-ups here to say shut up. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Hey, you're in kind of early, aren't you? I had to. Chuckles was on the warpath again. He didn't like my last script. This is Chuckles' idea of a rejection slip. <laughs> oh, no. He wanted a new twist on his old pie-in-the-face routine, so I had this idea where a midget runs in and hits him with a shortcake. <laughs> that sounds kind of funny to me. Chuckle said he thought it was too subtle. You're kidding. <laughs> anyway, he's looking at my new script now, so I thought I'd stop by for a cup of kind words. Oh. Hey, listen, I love my newspaper this morning. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Mary, I, I really had a wonderful time last night. Wait a minute, I think the girl's supposed to say that. Oh, hey, Wes, I had a wonderful time last night. Oh, that's terrific. <laughs> well, anyway, I just came in well, early I, just I so Chuckles he, uh, thought they don't know what I'm coming in early. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I hope I did. Oh, it's you. Oh, well, I gotta get going. It's time for Chuckles' 9.30 tantrum. I'll see you later, Mayor. Okay. Mary. Don't kiss in the office. <laughs> All right, that's it. That does it. I've had it. Wes, what's wrong? I just quit. Well, what happened? Right after I left you, I walked into Chuckles' office. The first thing he hits me with is my new script. What was the matter with it? I don't know. He just kept hitting me with it. <laughs> One thing led to another, and, well, I, I quit. Mary, I'm supposed to be a writer. You, you want to see something? Look at this. Look. Look at that. This is what he makes me wear in the warm-up before the show. Do you know what it feels like for a grown man dressed like this to stand in front of a bunch of screaming kids going, chuck-a-luck-a, chuck a luck chuck a luck chuck a luck It's not dignified. Hey, Mer, this is really neat. Put me in some T-shirts like that with my face on it. Ken, would you go somewhere else and talk about T-shirts, please? Oh, oh, sure, okay. 
I think you did the right thing. You do? I do. Boy, I don't. Yeah, at least I won't go hungry. I got a whole gag file full of shortcakes. Well, we don't have those kinds of problems in our show, do we, Moore? <laughs> We're more than anchorman and writer. <laughs> We're comrades in arms. <laughs> Pals. <laughs> Amigos. Ted, I wouldn't go that far. Murray, do you remember when Mr. Grant said something about doing a five-minute humor spot on the news? Yeah. He even had a title for it. Uh, the Lighter Side. Wes could do that. What do you mean, write it? Yeah, he could write it. He could perform it, too. Not on my show. I mean, he's always wanted to be a comedian, and I think he has done some performing. Not on my show. I think it's a terrific idea. <laughs> Mary, tell Lou this is my show, and nobody goes on it unless I say so. Okay, Ted, I'll tell it then. Ah, uh, second thought, I'll, I'll tell him myself. Lou? Well, how you doing? Uh, Mr. Grant, are you busy? Yes, I am busy. Well, I mean, are you really busy or, or just, uh, you know, busy? I would say just, you know, busy. In that case, I want to talk to you about having Wes Callison do a five-minute humor spot on the news. I thought we could tape an audition demo, you know, and then play it back to you at your convenience. Okay. Because, see, the reason I was thinking about it was that I remembered how you kept saying we got to get some humor into the news. Mary, and... I already said okay. Tape it. <laughs> okay? Okay. Mr. Grant, you're having fun with me, aren't you? <laughs> yes, Mary, I am having fun with you. This is probably the most fun I have had with you. Pretty soon I will have to stop all this fun and go back to work. After all, Mary, life is more than just mirth and whoopee, isn't it? I will go and take it. Mary, thanks for a great time. As soon as we stand in the checkout line that says eight items or less, suddenly realizing we have nine, we bid a fond farewell to a great evening at our local supermarket. This is Wes Callison for the lighter side. Oh, well, you certainly were right again, Mr. Grant. Boy, I gotta give you that. I mean, this is just what our show can use. It's got warmth, charm, humor. Boy, you sure were right. <laughs> Don't you think? <laughs> that you were right, Mr. Grant? Mary, I don't think that belongs on our show. But, Mr. Grant, this is just the kind of material that people can, can identify with. I mean, like what we just saw. Everybody goes to the supermarket. I don't go to the supermarket. <laughs> well, I mean, you got to admit it was funny. I mean, all right, it wasn't funny, ha-ha, but it was, it was certainly funny, you know, sort of... Whimsical? Right, whimsical. I hate that. <laughs> Mary... Wes is a very nice guy. That's but all right. No, Mr. Grant, you certainly don't owe me an explanation. <laughs> I want to explain it to you. No, no, everybody has his own taste, Mr. Grant. It's... No, you're getting that voice, that, that chalk on a blackboard voice. I don't like it when you get that voice. Well, I'm, I'm sure I, I don't know what voice you're talking about, Yeah, Mr. that's Grant. the voice. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll certainly try to watch that voice in the future. <laughs> Mary, you're letting your personal feelings get in the way of a purely business decision. There's nothing personal here, and you have no right to be mad. You're right. But you're mad. All right, Mr. Grant, I will not be mad at you anymore. <laughs> Mary, I don't enjoy saying no to somebody, but that's my job. And it's especially unpleasant for me to say no to someone as nice as Wes. Okay, when do you want to break it to him? Uh, uh, I think you'd better handle that. Oh, Mary, you got a great dinner work in there. Rack of lamb, fresh asparagus, chocolate mousse for dessert. Yeah, well, I figured it's the least I can do for him. Going to give Wes the bad news tonight, huh? Yeah, gee, I wish there was some nice way to break it to him. Well, I guess that's everything. 
Oh, everything except the scotch. I forgot to buy scotch. Oh, Mary, you better get some scotch. I mean, it's hard for a guy to drown his sorrows in fresh asparagus. <laughs> Phyllis usually has some scotch. I'll see if I can borrow some from her. Hey, Rhoda, would you stick around for a few minutes in case Wes shows up? I'll be right back. Sure. Hi. Ah, Wes. Rhoda. Yeah. <laughs> I ran into Mary on the stairs. She said you'd entertain me till she got back. Okay. What do you like, tap dancing or bird calls? <laughs> hey. Looks like, uh, looks like some kind of celebration, doesn't it? Yeah, it, it does look like that, doesn't it? I got the job, didn't I? Uh, Wes, I think Mary should be the one to tell you. Oh, well, come on, you can tell me. No, no, I really, I, I, I don't think I should. Uh-uh. Listen, Rhoda, I promise to act surprised when Mary tells me. Please tell me. No, really, Wes, I would rather not, if you don't mind. She told you, right? Yeah, she told me. Well, then you can tell me. No, really, Wes, I, I can't tell you, okay? Okay. Uh, how long have you been a, a neighbor here of Mary's? Oh, two years now. I initially wanted... Rhoda, to... please tell me. <laughs> right. <laughs> Thank you. You know, you I didn't really get it. appreciate it. I didn't, uh-huh. You didn't get it. I didn't? No. Didn't get it. Right. Maybe, maybe you heard wrong. Um, gee, Wes, I don't think so. Nah. Well, that's the way it goes, I guess. It, certainly not the first time I ever lost a job. Right. I guess it won't be the last. Oh, God, I didn't get it! I didn't get it! Oh, nuts! Walk it off! Walk it off! Yeah, good! Hi, Mom, I didn't get it! <laughs> hey, Wes, don't forget to act surprised! Do you believe that, Phyllis? She wouldn't lend me a whole bottle of scotch. She had to pour it into a mayonnaise jar. Where's Wes? He's in the kitchen. Oh, well, listen, uh... You better get going now. I mean, I do have to tell him. Right. Oh, I didn't get it. <laughs> oh, uh, I only gave him a hint. <laughs> I, I didn't get it, did I? No. Uh, certainly not the first time I ever lost a job. <laughs> So it won't be the last. Hi, Wes. Hi, Mer. Hiya. Hi. Ready for lunch? Yeah, in about two minutes. Wes. Hi, Lou. Good to see you. How you been? Good, thank you. Nice to see you. Oh, you look great. Well, you... Thank you. Doesn't he look great, Mary? Yes, Mr. Grant, he certainly does. Yeah. So what's new? Hola. No. Hello, Wes. <laughs> oh, hi, Chad. I saw your audition. I hope you don't mind a little constructive criticism from an old pro. <laughs> Not at all, Ted. What'd you think? You're never going to make it on television with that kind of dumb stuff. <laughs> yeah, Wes, you should listen to Ted when he talks about dumb stuff. <laughs> It's a specialty. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I said, well, well uh, I guess it all worked out for the best anyway. Uh, I finally got a job this morning doing something I've always wanted to do. Oh, Wes, that's terrific. I opened Friday night at the Melody Lounge as a comic. Congratulations. Oh. <laughs> Very. It's just sort of a trial. <laughs> well, I think you're going to be just great. So do I. Well, maybe so, but I'm going to need some laughers. So, Murray, Lou, I'd like for you to be Mary and my guest. Not a bad deal. Free drinks and dinner, and all I ask is you laugh very hard at everything I say. <laughs> You're all right. Uh, <laughs> see you then, okay? Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ted. Uh... You're welcome to join us if you're not busy Friday. Oh, thanks. I'll see if I can make it. <laughs> Did you tell us it was a bowling alley? I didn't know. Too bad. If I'd known, I would have brought my ball. You can bring us some drinks when you're ready. It's not a very big crowd, is it? 
Well, it's early yet. I mean, you know, it'll fill up as soon as the show starts. Don't you think, Mr. Grant? Yeah. It looked like the six and seven lanes were about finished. <laughs> oh, that comes some people now. I told you, madam, I don't care where you sit. I don't work here. <laughs> Tell there's going to be a bowling alley. Jim, why did you wear a tuxedo anyway? Well, it's opening night, isn't it? I want to look nice when he introduces me from the audience. Hold up. The show's starting. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. The Melody Lounge of the Midtown Bowling Lanes. Bruno D'Angelo, general manager, operating 24 hours a day, is proud to present a rising new comedian. Wes Callison. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, nice, nice to see you all here. A lot of you are probably wondering who I am, so I thought I'd tell you a little bit about myself. I, I come from a little town in Kansas to show you the kind of town it is. They didn't have a movie camera in the bank to take pictures of a robber. They had an old man in the back doing charcoal sketches. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> then, uh... I, uh, I, I left uh, Kansas to go to New York to, be, to become a writer. <laughs> and then as a, as a writer, I, uh, I got a, my first job was on the television show Password. Uh, so uh, now with your permission, I'd like to do some of the more famous words I wrote while on that show. Uh, Remember broccoli? <laughs> How about boxcar? <laughs> Brings back the old memories, doesn't it? <laughs> Droopy. Zenith. And, and, the, and the ever popular noodle. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, if any of you remember any of these words and want to say them along with me, duh, don't be afraid to. And then I wrote cupcake. Lips, and my favorite, and I certainly hope one of yours. Huh? Is there anybody here with a green station wagon with license plates 9AD732? Your, your lights are on. Well, let's see, where was I? Uh, oh, yeah, my favorite and one of yours was yo yo. <laughs> <laughs> and then, then later on, I was uh, I was uh, fired from Password by Alan Ludden when I used the word uh, xylophone in, in the lightning round. <laughs> uh, <laughs> see, uh, lightning rounds where they go real fast, and that I guess that word xylophone. Then I got my next job, which was on uh, Sesame Street. You know, I wrote the first three shows, A, B, C. judge all bowlers by a few. No, there, there are good bowlers and there are bad bowlers. Yeah. Mary, you can't let Wes see you like this. Not now. This was such an important night to Wes. He was counting on it so much. And I don't have a handkerchief. Yeah, 
There you go. I was talking to Chuckles today, and he said Wes can have his old job back if he wants it. He can? Yeah. He's had five writers since Wes left, and he's fired every one. The last one was his dad. <laughs> I said not now. <laughs> You're welcome. You can come in now. I fixed it. And did you ever wonder if Paul Revere had been English instead of American, would he have run around town, town yelling, go back to sleep, go back to sleep? Or, or did you ever think if a horse had a sore leg, would he call it? He didn't finish. Charlie Person. <laughs> appreciate you all being such a nice audience. I hope you pick up all your spares. <laughs> Good night. I did, did have this one routine that I was going to do about the world's first undertaker, but I, uh, uh, maybe I'll, I'll do that for you on the second show. Thank you. Didn't even introduce me from the audience. <laughs> Ted, uh, what do you say you and I go out and see if we can find a pair of patent leather bowling pumps? See Put on a tuxedo when he didn't introduce me from the audience. Murray, I think I'm going to join you. Uh, okay, Rob. Listen, kid, we'll talk later, huh? I ought to make him pay for the rental of this tuxedo. <laughs> you going to be okay? Well, Mary, uh, you want to come watch us bowl a couple games? No, thank you, Mr. Mr. I'll just wait here for Wes. Yeah, sure. That's good. Rotten, rotten. Wes, you were not rotten. Uh, Chuckles called me this morning and said I could have my old my old job back. Well, it won't be so bad, will it? I guess not. Mary, will you bury me? Well, I... Uh, I was just looking for something to pep up my evening. <laughs> Wes, look, I know, I know. Nobody how... laughed, Mary. Wes, I laughed. You cried. All right, Wes, look at it this way. You always said you wanted to be a comedian. And tonight you got a chance to be it. I guess you're right. There's a lot of people in this world that go through life wanting to do something and never getting a chance to do it. Right. Boy, are they lucky. <laughs> We were so poor, my, my parents couldn't afford baby shoes, so later on they had my feet bronzed. <laughs> they couldn't even afford to have my tonsils taken out, so they just had them loosened. Oh, no. You're just laughing to make me feel good. No, I am not. How, how do I know that's a real laugh? <laughs> because my phony laugh is lousy. Let's hear your phony laugh. <laughs> you really liked it, huh? Yes, I did. Well, that's about it for our second show, and you've been such a nice audience, I think I'll take you home now. <laughs> did you really think I was funny? Yes, I did. No kidding. I mean, seriously, did you really think you I was were funny? funny. You were really laughing. Yes. <laughs>